Hey everybody, welcome to TIW Podcast. I'm Eric, and today I watched Survivor Season 38, Edge of Extinction, Episode 7. Uh, this is the, the episode that aired on April 3rd, 2019. Um, so, last time... Oh, spoilers ahoy! I'm going to talk about what happened in this episode, if you don't want to find out who got voted off and all that stuff. So go watch it. It's a pretty good one. Not my favorite of the season so far, but it was still pretty good. I, I enjoyed the ending. I liked what happened at Tribal Council, uh, even though it means certain other things. But before we get to that, um, last time, Joe was voted off, betrayed by Kama Strong, uh, but Aurora was left out of that decision, and the remaining six... Um, uh, stuck together and voted Joe out, leaving Aurora in the dark, presumably because Aurora and Joe are uh, kind of close in the game, and uh, they she would have spilled the beans, probably. But uh, yeah, this entire episode, Aurora is not happy about that, but uh, perhaps that is a motivating factor because uh, her first, her team, uh, for the reward challenge, which was Chinese food back at, the, at camp, um, they're a little bit boisterous about having good food, um, maybe, but it, it didn't seem to focus too much on how much that annoyed uh, the losing team. But that team consisted of Eric, Victoria, Julia, War Dog. Wait, Eric, Victoria, Julia, Aurora, War. Do That's exactly what I just said. War Dog and Rick Devins, um, and the the rest were not too happy about that. But Lauren was the most unhappy about that because she has yet to ever win anything at all. Except for that challenge where they won. Is that the challenge they won the chickens? No, they, they, they won some. They, they've won a few times. No, no, that's right. Uh, she was not on the tribe anymore at that point. Um, the other. Yeah, yeah. She's only been a part of that one win, which was not really all that much. Anyway, she was having a, t a tough time of it. Uh, I liked that challenge. It was it involved swimming uh, with big bags of planks and then assembling a puzzle out of those planks. And uh, I think it was Victoria and um, I think it was Victoria and, and Aurora, I think, were the two assembling the puzzle. And they did very well. The, the the rest of their team did very well with helping them. Maybe it wasn't her. It was Victoria and somebody else. Whoever the other person was on her team. But um, yeah, yeah, they did an excellent job. Whereas the other team were just yelling at each other and being very upset with uh, David's inability to put things in holes. He got the slat stuck a few times. Um, but yeah, that was a, it was a pretty cool challenge. Not the most complex puzzle, um, but it uh, was enough of a challenge for one team to have a uh, get the jump on the other. Uh, they, they got through the obstacle part of it uh, very quickly as well compared to the other team. Um, meanwhile, over on Edge of Extinction, uh, they all get a bottle with another clue in it, and Aubrey finds the clue uh finds a piece of parchment and a key and it is uh directions to a secret location where she can practice for the next challenge to get back into the game the first phase of the next challenge i guess it was something to do with ropes they didn't actually show what she was doing with those um maybe it was the um like rope obstacle course type i don't know i don't know they didn't show her actually doing it but she also got an advantage uh, to share with somebody still in the game. And she made a pretty good call um, by giving it to Aurora. Uh, I guess she probably um, could tell that she was on the outs with the others. Um, she was on the outside of that vote. So maybe that was why. But it turned out being a really good move because um, while she didn't need to even use it yet, but um, Aurora then won the immunity challenge. Now, this immunity challenge, they had to stand on a uh, on the bar, like a like a ledge, a thin ledge there, 
and um, hold a, a block between the top of their head and the top of the frame that they're standing on. And um, I, I don't think I would enjoy this challenge at all. I would like, I'd be out immediately, I think, because you have to stand on your toes, basically. And I think it might be an advantage. It's, uh, I mean, anecdotally, it seems that it's an advantage. Uh, this is making the assumption, and it's probably not, it's not a good assumption to make necessarily, but I think for the most part, um, female players would, ha would have experience uh, standing in that manner, uh, more experience uh, with uh, wearing high heels and stuff like that uh, than most male players would. And so I think that's maybe a slight advantage, but it's like even so, like what kind of advantage is that anyway? You're not doing that while you're wearing high heels. So it's like maybe like a little bit, you're a little bit more used to it. Like, I don't know. I, it's still, it still sucks to do this, this, um, uh, this endurance challenge. But um, it came down, D David was uh, in fourth place. He uh, stepped out with, uh, I think it was Victoria, Lauren, and Aurora still in the game. And Lauren straight up passes out, uh, falls right off the block there. And uh, Jeff, Jeff is just like, uh, she's probably fine. We have people on it. Just keep going. Stay focused on the game. Which I, I understand both sides of of viewing that like on one hand it's like what you don't stop the game when somebody get passes out um and the other side of it is well them staying in the game isn't really hurting lauren anymore and um them stopping the game wouldn't help her anymore because their medical staff is all around them and there's no need for the other players to go over there none of that um so i think it's a good call to keep them going in the game not necessarily a good call for aurora to to be negotiating with uh with victoria while the medical staff is doing their thing of course they couldn't really see what was going on um and they probably assumed like well yeah it's fine for me to aurora, aurora probably assumed yeah, it's fine for me to keep talking because we're still in the game. He didn't stop the game. Why wish it would I necessarily stop? Because they can't actually see. And then you just see the rest of the players already eliminated. Like, oh my god, what is she doing? Somebody needs to tell her that this doesn't look good. Um. Yeah, it was. I I enjoyed this challenge, uh, especially uh knowing that uh lauren is okay after this like she didn't have to be taken away on a boat or something uh she she woke up and then she <laughs> immediately the first thing she she does when she wakes up she goes oh, damn it and i was like okay oh, yeah, she's fine she's fine um she's she's her pride is hurt more than um more than anything else just just was like I'm, I'm so embarrassed and uh jeff says no no that because you passed out like that shows a sign of a warrior like you didn't give up you pushed your mind further than your body could and um you know that is somewhat ad admirable but also very dangerous that it could have been a very bad thing so she's a little bit of luck as well as being uh pretty strong um so Aurora has immunity and uh, <clears throat> all this talk on from the comma strong seven, uh, Eric and Ron uh, dangling the idea of, oh, we all want to get to loved ones, don't we? We all want to get to loved ones. And that is me. That is shown a lot throughout this whole episode. And uh, I it has to be annoying for them to be hearing that with how annoying it was um, just watching it. But, of course, maybe those were actually the only times he ever said anything about it. And they are condensed into, you know, a 20-minute span. Um, whereas that, over like three days, maybe wouldn't be so bad. But uh, he brings it up in Tribal Council and all that. And uh, Julia and Gavin especially are like, 
man, they're tar- well. War Dog approaches both of them first, and uh, gets gets them on his wavelength, saying like they're they're trying to get Devons and and David with them, and they're gonna take you out as as soon as they get rid of us. Um, so you know, make your move or not, whatever I guess. But we're down to work with you guys. So um, it was kind of funny. He, he says the exact same thing to both of them. And it worked. They were both on the same page. And then they were trying to get Victoria over on their side. But uh, I think Tribal Council, that solidified things. Like Victoria realized, oh, yeah, I should go with them. And uh, however it happened, it was um, – so I think it was those three. Uh, the Lysu, other than um, Devon's. Because he was against those guys. He's like, they already voted me out. I'm not with them anymore. Um, those three. And then they somehow got uh, Aurora into the fold. Which uh, we didn't really see any of them approach her, I don't think. At least not that I noticed. But um, they must have like thought, well, she has immunity. She's upset with, you know, she's upset with Eric and Ron especially. Um Let's uh, see if she'll go along with this and take out Eric. And they do. And Eric did not see that coming. Another actual blindside. And I was clapping and uh, just giving give that congratulatory clap to my television. And uh, it, was a, it was a good one. Um, now I am really, really, really rooting for Aubrey to get back into this game off of Edge of Extinction. Um, because... Things are looking bleak over there as as far as the uh, <laughs> the chances against all these really strong physical players. But perhaps there will be like a big puzzle aspect to it. Phase one is has to do with ropes and locks and whatever. Uh, phase two, maybe that's like a, a puzzle that, um, well, Joe is really good at puzzles too. But uh, I'm, I'm rooting for Aubrey to get back into the game. I think that would be really cool. Um, so... Eric gets voted out big blind side. That's on the bright side. That's a, that's a good thing. Exciting thing. But on the other hand, freaking Kelly is still in the game. David is still in the game. We still have returning players in the game. Yes. I just said that I was rooting for, for Aubrey, but uh, she is the underdog over there on edge of extinction. Well, Reem is also, but, um, Man, if they make if it's if it's final three, all returning players, um, then the new players d- deserve to not be in the final three because they let three returning players get that far. So at some point they gotta to realize. I mean, they already realize we gotta get Joe and Aubrey out of here, but uh, one of them can get back into the game, and if you have all four returning players out of the game then uh, at most, only one of them can get back in. But right now, there's still a possibility of three returning players being there at the end. So um, we'll see what happens next. I think uh, this really threw oil on the flames. Is that the phrase? It fanned the flames? It, 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 it lit the gasoline. It poured ga- gasoline on the flames, on the fire. I don't know. Whatever the idiom is. Um, I'm an idiom idiot. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what happens yet next. I am still rooting. Who did I say I was rooting for now? Um, uh, did I say, I I think it's Victoria. Victoria has been my pick for a while, I think, but Julia, oh, she got things going. She got things going in this episode. She made this happen. She convinced the others to go along with it. Um, and Gavin to an extent too. Um, he was on board like right away. So I guess it could be argued that they were both doing it, but really it was Wardog who said it all in motion. But, uh, anyway, Victoria is still Victoria and Julia. They're, they're my two picks right now. And, uh, you know, Lauren, it's kind of growing on me a little bit, like in a weird way. I don't, I'm not sure exactly why i i mean she's she's really struggling um so i guess it's that kind of aspect to it like i hope she like at least wins a reward and can get some food and 
maybe she'll like that will be a turning point and then she'll just like dominate after that and then once she gets one win we've only seen her lose so far basically so i think if we finally do see her win that that could set things into motion yeah the one the one thing that she did win was to get the chickens i think i think that's when that's the only time because that was in ep- episode three and then it was in episode four is when they split into three tribes. So, yeah, that's the only win that she's had. Um, there was the episode 5.1 win, but that was an idol. That was a, an immunity win. Uh, so they didn't get any food for that. So, yeah, that is a that is a big bummer. She hasn't had any food because they didn't eat the chickens. So um, I don't think they even got eggs from that because they were let out before they could even start laying eggs. Um, so yeah, that's it for this episode. I'm excited to see what happens next. I will be back in town for uh, by the time the next episode's airs, episode airs. So I will watch it right away. And um, I think it, this worked very really well. Even though it was with the commercials, watching it live, um, it was actually pretty fun. It followed right after NXT, um, which I didn't even record an episode for that yet. But I take notes for that one and NXT UK. So that one's a little bit easier to put off recording this. I didn't want to forget like all the details for this episode to talk about. Um, so I'll be back for uh, to talk about next week's episode um, probably around the same time, but maybe on Thursday morning. Um, you know, it depends on how things go. So stay tuned for all that. Let me know what you thought about this episode and the season so far. Who are you rooting for by tweeting me? at TIW Podcast. Go to TIWpodcast.com for more reviews. If you enjoyed this episode or anything else on the site, please share some links with your friends. Subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, wherever you like to listen to your podcasts. And um, I'll be back real soon with more. Uh, thanks for listening. This has been TIW Podcast. Bye.